Welcome to His House of Learning podcast number nine. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. These are 16 things concerning my worldview and theology. Originally, it seemed like it'd be nine, but then it's expanded to 16. One just added recently. We're going through these in summary. So for further details, check previous uploads or the uploads to come. And to get an idea of what will be happening in a near, and, well, we'll see more or less the long term as of into next year, future, for his house of learning, as well as his home academy, please check out the update video. For now, let's get started. Number one. Yes, I, I would like to say that I am 95% KJV, King James, version of the Bible only. 95% doesn't mean I would refuse to read other versions. It's just I'm more averse to other versions, versions, excuse me, particularly modern versions. I just prefer something that's well for one public domain, free, time tested, and it is indeed is a uh, fine standard for the English language. I don't condemn and look down upon anybody else who uses other similar versions such as the ESV I mean for goodness sakes most of those who I fellowship and associate with don't read King James so and I know full well that they are that they are my brethren as far as I'm concerned people are missing out when they don't study from the King James but of course it's also beneficial to know and it gives me gives me much comfort confidence when people such as using the ESV something similar similar caliber because there are indeed a number of translations including the NIV and New Living Translation and then the message paraphrase it's not even a translation it's a paraphrase I'd say just that's for new believers or just those who are curious otherwise you should get a much better written translation especially the one that is more properly you know, studied and constructed by those who were believers and surely walking in the spirit of, of the Lord. So, yeah, 95% King James only meaning it's not all or nothing, but that is my go-to along with casual study of the Greek and Hebrew along the way. All right, number two. I am a six-day creationist. Yes, literal interpretation of the origins of the world, all of creation at large, according to the Book of Genesis. I, yeah, as you as you imagine, any form of macroevolution, Darwinian in particular, which is very outdated, even among scientific circles, is a no-go. Theistic evolution, to me, is just allegorical, metaphorical, vain imaginations of man. So yeah, six days of creation. That is my conviction there, as far as I'm concerned, based on really just the history, science itself, and whether you want to think, it, think, think, think of that or, or not. And as well as just life experience itself, that that the account given by the Lord in Genesis really bears much to the true nature of man and our world. And that ties into science, the limitations of method. I'm going to count this all in number two. Now, I'm going to uh, throw out the, uh, the admittance that I have said quite a while back that I believe that the earth is flat. I retract using that term because, quite frankly, there's too much baggage, confusion, and it's a very broad. It's it's just as broad as saying, "Well, I'm a, I'm a, well, I believe that the Earth is a globe, or it really is, Earth is a globe, or I'm a heliocentrist." Like, it's no, it's, it's saying the Earth is flat is just too broad of a category. Like because because if you really look into all three of those realms, you know, flat Earth. Globe Earth, geocentrism, heliocentrism, it's very wide range. Very wide range of, of uh, beliefs, perspectives, philosophy, and source material. 
So I would say that, say that rather than use any of those terms, I would say that based on the scientific method, based on the actual evidence that, that, that we have, when it comes to whether or not it is conclusive, overall, no, it's not. As far as realistically speaking, and you can look into like look into yourself without even thinking like, oh, he's flat Earth or geocentric or he he was like, no, no, ignore all that. Based on whether or not the evidence is conclusive, from the observation all the way down to the very outcome, to the conclusion, everything else, including the research and the experimentation, is it actually conclusive? And I would say that overall, our current understanding of creation, the universe, and our place in the universe, from that perspective of scientific method, is overall inconclusive. So I leave it at that. Number two, summary of the gospel. Sorry, this is, this is number, number three, summary, summary of the gospel. People say it's the ABCs. Well, of salvation. I would say it's the A through Z summary. The, the 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 gospel itself is the outline of A to Z from that of genera sorry ge Genesis to Revelation from the time of which of creation rebelling against the Lord God. You know, it's just a redemptive work of the Lord through that of the law. His, his you know his his mercy and grace. His intervention, and eventually the propitiation for our sins, as you know, coming, coming, you know, coming as a man, perfect, perfect man and God, born of a virgin, without the Holy Spirit, dying on the cross, resurrecting, once back in, once again back into per, per, you know perfection and glory sitting on the right hand of the Father, and soon Jesus Christ, and soon, because we don't know, and for the Lord, time is what? Nothing. <laughs> the centuries are mere seconds for him. In due time, he will be, he'll be coming back, but more on that later. So yes, the gospel is an outline, A through Z. A, B, and C, I'd say C is, okay, you're saved, and then D through Z is, so this is what you do until the end of your life. These are, this is what you should be expecting. This is what could happen during your life. This could happen after the end of your life. Wherever, wherever your know, prophecy, wherever the will of the Lord God falls. All right, number four, the role of the church. Summarize into three things, fellowship, worship, and service. Is the ecclesia, is the is, which means fellowship. We come together, we edify one another, minds and souls and things of the Lord. We correct one another. We hold each other accountable. We encourage one another. We break bread, and then there's this thing, and we worship the Lord. We focus on Him and have His Word and Spirit empower us, and then. We come together to perform acts of service, whoever that he calls us to as individual members of the body of Christ. And really, there is the church, the ecclesia at large, of all those who are redeemed, who have received the, the grace brought to us by the salvation and resurrection of Christ. But in matters that of our day-to-day -day lives matters that of what you see focused in the scriptures is not the abstract and the theoretical of the quote quote universal body of christ that's more of a man-made construction the universal body yes you can think about it in theory and abstract it is true but we don't know who saved who is truly of the church it's not just a matter of attendance and membership so what's more important is what? What you see in the scriptures, the New Testament for sure, from, you know, from Matthew all the way to Revelation, you see the emphasis on what? The local body, the local congregation, which oftentimes can meet together with other 
local congregation bodies as well. So please make sure that you remember that when it comes to church, the prerogative of the believer is local fellowship, worship, and service. All right. Number five, the, the five is history. In, su in summation, there's nothing new under the sun. What man has done since time immemorial, since pretty much the same t today, it's just different, there's different avenues and means, skins and costumes and languages, but the same thing. From the Garden of Eden, you have the believing in the in the deception that we can be as God, that we can do things our way and achieve perfection, or at least our our version of heaven, success, excellence, whatever that may be, on earth. And we do it by our own merits. And that's what man has been trying to achieving, if not universally, like a true universal, but artificially under that of a God-man, an antichrist of the finest order, in that of the Tower of Babel, under that of Nimrod, and which will be attempted again during that of the tribulation period, under what under the man of sin known as the beast. But more on that later. There is much in history that even though there's generally nothing new, there's much that is unknown. Which leads us into point number six, politics. Politics, unfortunately, for human endeavors, has been, well, the competition between the lesser of two evils. And as a result, we've been, well, thankfully, by the Lord's mercy and grace, or at his second call, as far as the rise and fall of nations, kingdoms, of empires, of militaries, and even of corporate and commercial powers. Although it is important to keep in mind that even here, United States of America, focusing, using us as a, as a microcosm, between left and right, Democrat, Republican, conservative, conservative, liberal, or even even another false paradigm, which is very limited in scope between Christian and atheist or theist and non-theist. We've often been resigned to choose what we call the lesser of two evils. But we're still choosing evil. I say we go back to the original covenant in which we pledge our allegiance first and foremost to the Lord God, his law. Instead of putting our hope and trust into our, our, into our civil institutions to bring us peace, liberty, justice. For indeed, the Lord himself establishes civil powers, but we have a tendency to get in the way and make things far more complicated, if not corrupt, than it was meant to, to be. So with that said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So by all means, my dear brethren, if you are involved in government, in law enforcement, legal services, anything tied in more so directly into it, that is your, if that is where the Lord has led you to serve him, Please do so faithfully, but remember your first love. Remember who your master is. As for the rest of us, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's where politics begins. Number seven, economy. The matter of the covenant, we are trust, hope in him. He is our provider. He is our strong tower. He is our sustenance. He makes the rain fall on the good and evil alike. That is his mercy. That is his will. Remember to be, to be faithful in the covenant with him. We believe in this thing called unconditional love. 
Well, I'm not here to tell you that a covenant is a relationship, and relationships go both ways. And the Lord God is not an equal in this relation. He is the Creator. He is the Lord. He is the Almighty. He is the Heavenly Father. King of King, Lord, Lord, Lord. He is the Alpha and Omega. He owes us nothing, but regardless, he still gives us so much more than he receives back. And with that said, put your faith and hope and trust in him in all things. Be content with a little. And when you have a lot, be ready to be generous, just as he's been generous to watch to us. To those of us, especially who are his children, because before and we were his enemies. So choose who you will serve, the Lord or Mammon. The big heavenly things from him or that of this of this you know of this world, worldly temporal gain. You cannot have one foot in both camps. Number eight, religion. Everything from atheism to Zoroastrianism, A to Z, including that of other cults, religions. Philosophical, philosophical paradigms, secret societies, and even false church and false churches of so many stripes, so many, so many species, are antichrist, or in their own shape, their own shape, and their own form, and their own substance, they deny the biblical revelation of our lord and savior jesus christ whether it could be his it could be his bodily resurrection his divine soul sovereignty you know, denying his virgin birth denying that he was a you know de, you know de, de, denying that he had a human body etc cetera, etc cetera. or denying that he, anything that he taught he said as mistaken or a lie or denying him as just the, just just, just the Lord completely. Anything that, anything that is not in communion with him, anything that is not submitted to him, everything that denies him is Antichrist. From atheism, atheism to Zoroastrian, A to Z, that includes Judaism, Roman Catholicism, Mormonism, Islam, and like I said, all kinds of false, if not spiritless, churches, whether they be quote unquote traditional, conservative, or liberal and progressive. Charismatic, Pentecostal, Seventh day Adventist. I'll talk more about you guys in the meantime. Interesting fellows, but not too. I'm not too fond of your extra biblical writings that you treat as holy writ. Moving on, number nine, men and women, the sexes. Gender applies to things. Sexes applies to people. You're either a man, a man or a woman. And if you're a male or a female, that applies to what? Your sex, you, your, phys your physiology. It is, it is not separate from our humanity. We are not we 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 are not you know bodies with souls no human being is if you look at the scriptures pretty plain as day is a body soul a mind a heart a spirit inseparable where they start and end is up to much speculation and debate but regardless there's there's still one no gnosticism will be Will be associated here and with that said men and women have their roles men we are the heads of our homes wives submit to us and women you only submit to your husband in respect deferring to him but husbands love and sub thereby submit to their wives loving them as christ has sacrificially loved the church and together in their position, in their union, 
they bring forth more life. And whose sovereignty, who do they teach to fear and love? Each, each other? The other? No. But in fear and love of, of the Lord God, following his word, his law, and, well, they prayerfully, their children, their offspring, indeed, indeed accept the guidance and comfort, the justification and the sanctification that can only be brought through abiding in his Holy Spirit. Moving on to the next one. Multicultural ism and racialism as a uh, disclaimer i am what you would call a mixed indiv individual i have ethnic and racial connections to most of the world other than i guess you say the majority population of that which you would be in, in the continent of asia and o and also the region of oceania with that said I find that I I do not take too kindly to diversity, inclusion, and equity, considering it is a perversion of really all three, all three of those terms and what they actually represent. And I find that the Lord has established the nations, the ethnicities, he has, he has set them about within different lands. With their, you know, with their, you know, with their cultures, their languages, their heritages, their histories, and yes, they do mix, they do intermingle. But I find indeed that man, if not under under that the species of devils, have artificially you know, worked amongst each other, whether it be through force or through false love. Conquest invasion is one thing; it's quite apparent. You know, something that we, something that's something that's definitely di difficult to address because of the long-term consequences. Latin America is a is, is a prime example of that. <laughs> when you looked at the mestizo, the majority mixed populations, quite a bit to sort out throughout. Because really. A people should not come together unless they are like-minded and they and and, if, and here's the thing if they, and if they're unequally yoked, meaning that they're meaning that you have believers and non-believers, they should remain apart. Now, here's the thing: my my parents were not equally yoked, so like so many, it was a matter of love. This applies whether it be interracial or not interracial. You should not be e e equally yoked. The Lord has made it quite plain. But by the grace of the Lord, both my parents became equally yoked. My mother received her salvation a few years in into my life. And thus I've been able to live a more consistent spiritual upbringing. And thus be able to make sense of much of my, well rather diverse heritage. So, with that said, I can see how there could be quite a bit of confusion when man artificially, forcefully, and with false love puts itself to, to, like, together. There's quite a bit of uh, problems that can ensue that need to be addressed and are often ignored. Often, often ignored, neglected, and causes a lot of long-term problems. So with that said, once again, we go back to the church. In conclusion, Ecclesia, the local fellowship, local body, there should be no need, no imperative to be mixed, to be di diverse everywhere. But I say to this to, to, to the brethren that wherever you're at, within your locality, within your parameters, indeed, fellowship, worship with, and serve with those within your vicinity, within with that of your with that of your brethren, but don't think, but don't not think that it is imperative. Like it has to be like no, we have to meet these these cultural racial quotas and amalgamations. No, no. 
let the body of Christ naturally intertwine with one another at a pace because you cannot force you cannot force you should not force heritage history culture language to just graft onto each other if not be spliced together out of a out of a secular humanitarian imperative it's not worth it not worth it i leave you i leave you with that on such a controversial subject number 10 11 entertainment this is a very simple one i avoid much of a mainstream entertainment i don't really watch tv or movies use listen to much much current popular music in general i try to stay away from just regularly consuming news feeds as well and that includes books and blogs podcasts etc so any form of entertainment and media because entertainment especially if that's meant to be entertaining as in amusing as in antithetical to to, like to cognitive, reflective, contemplative, any form of active thinking. It's quite dangerous. You should be very wary. Very wary. You don't know what's being put into your heads, if not into your heart and soul. So I don't say ban it, but I say caution. And caution means using discernment and allowing the spirit to, to to like to guide you not just what appeals to you because that's carnal that's fleshly that's being stupid but actually following what you know to be true what you know to be right and letting the lord actually guide your conscience saying about freedom of conscience free choice free whatever a truly free conscience, truly free spirit, truly free soul is one that follows the word and spirit of the Lord. And notice, I'm not saying a man. I'm saying God. And because that's who you should be getting fed from and and being you know, and being you know instructed from first and foremost. Moving on to number twelve, Israel, the nation, and the state. I am not one who believes that the church has replaced Israel. Now we are grafted into spiritual Israel because to be a Jew, to be a, ch a child of Israel, child of Jacob, as he was originally called, is to be one that is still in covenant with the Lord God. And, this, and now what entails what? Believing that Jesus Christ is, is the Messiah according to his word, through the Holy Bible. But the thing is that there is, but there still is a, an ethnic component. There is still a historical component. The seed of Abraham was promised by the Lord God, by the by, you know, to 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 the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, aka Israel, that regardless of what their children, what their offspring, what their descendants would do, because of their faithfulness, you can read the book of Hebrews, it's others. You'll see that, oh, okay. And it's also within the book of Isaiah and Jeremiah and even Ezekiel, <laughs> who was uh, quite uh, aggravated by their rebellion, that a remnant will always be preserved. That the ethnic, that the genetic, that the, that the, uh, that, that the heritage of the seed of Abraham, the direct line more or less, will be pr preserved to the very end that Christ himself will even come and make sure that the that the Jewish Hebrew Israeli whatever you want to call people are not completely d destroyed so the church is being wrapped into spiritual as in still in covenant Israel but there still is a separate ethnic Israel that will be preserved by the Lord due to his keeping his promise with the patriarchs as for the state of Israel, well, like I said earlier, the Lord raises up and tears down kingdoms, 
countries, in this case, a modern state. I would argue, from a biblical and historical, for all being honest perspective, that the current state of Israel was not established according to the standards, according to the word of, of, the, of the Lord, considering those who established it and those who maintain it have no regard for the lordship of Yahweh, if not despise Yeshua, Jesus Christ, they not see him as the Messiah, and they find to reject the leading, the guidance, the counsel of his Holy Spirit. Whether it be religious Jews, secular Jews, is irrelevant. Like the Gentile population at large, they are in rebellion against the Lord, and he seeks their repentance. The Lord is impartial. Yes, he has certain promises he's made to Israel, as I said before, but nonetheless, he sees their sin, he sees their wickedness just the same as he sees everybody else's. And in matters of the war today between Israel and Hamas and company, as far as I can tell, they're both at fault, some you know, in so many different ways. There really are no good good like good and bad guys. I apply this, by the way, as you may find this quite <laughs> scandalous, to that of World War Two, World War One, the Cold War at large, Iraq, Afghanistan, and all and you and and Russia, Ukraine, all such conflicts, and even that of the American Revolution slash war for in, war for independence, the Civil War. In the big in the big scheme of things, there really uh, there really is no good guy bad guy dynamic when you're dealing with man. But one thing you need to do for sure is in those conflicts, especially in our current one, is I say, may the war end in due time. And I know there will be no long term peace until the coming of Christ to establish His kingdom. But in the meantime, I say, may the corruption amongst the Jewish slash Israeli people and the Palestinians slash Muslims, may their rebellion against the Lord God cease. May there be conversion. May there be repentance amongst them. Indeed, may, may, may the killing stop. For I say, there are wars and rumors of wars. And rumors tend to be what? lies oftentimes very strategic conspiratorial lies all for the gain of mammon all for the gain if not for the gain of gain of a personal in, you know endeavor perhaps even from satan himself but more on that some other time going on to number 13 persecution and tribulation, including that of the tribulation. Persecution, my dear listeners, my brethren, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the more you and I live like our Savior, our Redeemer, the more we shall face being beguiled, being mocked, assaulted, affronted by our unsaved cousins are our saved neighbors. And why? Because just like him, remember, the darkness can't bear the light. And if we come more like the light, the darkness will not tolerate it. Now you now here's the thing. We may we may be able to and may, it may be and by we may be able to endure. For his remember is the light of Christ. We are mere candlelights. Mere candlelights. It is the it is the light, it is the source. It is the light of men that transforms the human hearts and thus cast out darkness. We are mere candlelights. And us candlelights, we may be at risk of being snuffed out during our lifetime. But regardless, we live in truth 
live in power, and we live in love. Because that is the way of our Lord who overcame the world. And we share in his resurrection. As for the tribulation, there will be much tribulation. But once again, he will overcome. As far as the tribulation comes, well, we don't quite know the day or the hour. Same as we, same as with the rapture. I lean towards pre-slash-mid-trib. Just how I interpret scripture. To me, it can go either way. And who knows? I could be dead wrong and be post-trib. Whatever. Because the reality is, nobody should be under the illusion that, I mean, just look at the historical record. If we think we're going to skip some terrible, horrendous things, you know, before his second coming, I'm sorry, like, that is, that is a hefty gamble. It's a foolish gamble. The odds are so against you that ugh, it's just unwarranted. It's not, it's, there's, there's no biblical, historical, or even now current events basis for it. Regardless of your position on pre, mid, and post, we need to be ready to endure to the very end. We need to be as Christ. When, even when sweating blood, not my will, Lord, but yours be yours be done. For he, for he, for he, for his mission was fulfilling the will of his heavenly Father. And we, if we have his Spirit, so many brethren have endured worse things than many of us currently. So many are enduring right now. Just things of biblical proportion this very day around the world, and it could come to us within our lifetimes. It could be, it could be, it could be that of the early 20th century all over again. And the second coming and the tribulation will still not have happened. We don't know. We don't know. But regardless, we must be faithful virgins. Waiting for his coming, whether it be our last breath, or we will witness him on this side of heaven. Which means what? I am a pre-millennial kingdom not but i'm not this but i'm not this this you know dispensational i believe a premillennial kingdom jesus christ will come back literally bodily with an army of course he'll be the only one fighting destroy his enemies at that time though the church will church wills as a whole the remnant in particular will have succeeded in proselytizing and preaching and teaching across the world Across cultures, across across ethnics, you know, backgrounds, across countries, across borders, so many different places, so many different environments. But nonetheless, we will be subject to much persecution. We will be subject to much hatred and vitriol from the world at large, including from a false church. Many of which who believe that they are serving God. Just like, remember, just like Paul, formerly Saul, persecuted Christ's church. Believing that he was doing a great service to, to, uh, to the Lord. And not just, you know, dispensational, don't care much for that, didn't really know what it was. Looked into it and like, oh, well, that's all, once again, that's all just like uh, evolutionary theism. That's a lot of vain imagination. All right, see, 15... C15 is going to be uh, Mystery Babylon. Yeah, M yeah, Mystery Babylon and the Beast. So, far as I can tell, Mystery Babylon is going to be a conglomeration of, well, A through Z. Atheism to Zoroastrianism. No less a false church. No less a harlot church. It'll be more or less a one world religion. There, there is talks about where the Mystery Babylon will be based in Rome, by that of the Roman Catholic Church, or it will be headquartered, because it's, you look at the book of Revelation, it's in direct relation to the city of Jerusalem. Or it will be among primarily the, 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 you know, the Jews, more or less, as the head, as a flagship of that. 
But still, it seems that regardless, everybody is going to be involved and everybody is going to suffer when Mystery Babylon is killed. And here's the thing. The beast, which is a man to be possessed by Satan himself, will, with ten kingdoms, with, with the military, the economic, the political you know, powers of the world, destroy Mystery Babylon, just, you know, to destroy this harlot, destroy this false church, this, this, you know, this, you know, religion, and replace it more with a type of monotheism, monotheistic, polytheistic, pantheism, but with a man at the helm, very similar to that of the days of Nimrod at the Tower of Babel. And that'll be the beast, so be wary, people, be wary. Don't get caught up in this lesser of two evils nonsense. Oh, we need to oppose this say, this obvious say, say, you know, satanic you know, agenda. But meanwhile, careful for what the devil, the dragon comes as an a, as an agent, a minister of the light, false light, a delusion, an illumination. So seductive, so convincing that if it were possible, even the elect of the Lord God would be deceived if it wasn't for his spirit, preventing them from being utterly blinded. So discernment, as I can't, I don't remember, there was a pastor that just excellent, excellent just statement given on this. Discernment is not for trying to identify things that are bad but trying to identify things that are almost good because what's e because because the world at large knows what's what like what evil is but what about things that look almost like they're good that's when the spirit of, that's when the word really has to kick in And then finally, education and schooling. Public school in general, don't do it. Don't put your students, don't put your children, don't put your students in public school. And for some reason, and you have to be honest with the Lord, and it's not because your personal feelings or the thoughts and you know, thoughts and words of other people, but no, you know in your heart of hearts that if the Lord is the one that has called you to do something in a public school setting. As between you and the Lord, if that's what you, where you believe he's called you to, but otherwise, if you know for a fact that he's re redirecting you, follow it. Follow it, because as far as I'm concerned, as far as my conviction goes, the system needs the blood of the saints. It needs the needs the competency. It needs the spirit. It needs the hope-filled hearts of the saints. Because it's because its own membership, its own rank and file, is sickly and becoming quite <laughs> quite you know just they're 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 just not dependable. Keep that in mind. Private school, caution. Exercise, caution. Discernment. I'm serving at a private, small private school right now. We're, we're, we've been turning a new leaf. Things are going in a good direction, but I'm still vigilant and watchful and encouraging and instructing my fellow brethren, and especially that in, in the administration. Same goes for you as well. Be mindful that there are plenty of things out there in fact, much of the mainstream private educational institutions are kowtowing to this ecumenical, if not one world, religious theology. Religious, uh, secular theology. Don't think atheism, don't think secularism is the enemy. Oh no. That is, that is just a front, my dear listeners. And so with that I say, homeschool. Homeschool, homeschool, homeschool. 
from the law of Moses all the way down to the book of Revelation, it's quite apparent that the parents of their progeny are to be the main dispensers of the word of the Lord and the main models of how to be guided by and comforted by his spirit. You want your children to grow up to be strong, wise, God-fearing adults, then you have to show them with your life. But hey, it's all in the Lord's hands. It's all by his mercy and grace. It's all by his will. But it's for your will. It is for your will. It's, that, you know, it's for my will that it is his. And he expects us to, what, to be faithful, just like his son, until the very end. With that said, these are things pertaining to my worldview and conviction. This is Christian M.C. Fulmer, signing out.